what's good everyone gberg stacks here so today i want to go over as you see on my screen the 14.18 worlds full patch preview because there are are a lot of changes a lot of buffs a lot of nurse a couple item changes i want to just talk about everything that means and what i believe it's going to mean for uh what we see towards the end of this year's cycle of patches and for next year because i believe that riot has stated that they are going to because this is the final patch that they will do for competitive play, I think a couple of these champions will end up being either reverted or, or nerfed or, you know, they're going to have to wait for like further changes in order to uh, readjust them again, you know, depending on what they want to do. Right. So specifically, someone like Ari, who's getting a buff, you know, they might end up making her overtuned for solo queue for this patch cycle but then when the next patch one hits if she's too op they'll probably just you know either revert the nerf halfway 75 percent, or they'll just revert it you know in totality just to make her you know right back where she was because she's not in a bad spot but they are they have told us and i believe they've hinted at at the very least that they do end up making a couple of these buffs to kind of push these champions towards like pro play and make sure that you know play pro players are looking at them and you know are ready to play them and stuff like that right so i'm not gonna go over like what a lot of the the words say most of the time i'm just gonna go over the buffs and you know you know talk about what it means for for you know just the game in general right so ari getting in increased damage on her e where you end up getting 10 per level and you get a flat 15 percent ap like um scaling ratio and what this means is that in mid lane already she's pretty much a versus all champions she's decent versus like the adc picks sometimes because obviously there's tristana and there's like champions that end up outranging her and stuff like that and have the ability to dodge her her skill shots which makes it a little bit harder but she's one of the better champions if you are forced to play a mage and whatever like draft you ended up picking and, and you know she ends up being one of the better choices because of her laning because of her uh, potential to bully her like early damage her early agency and things like that right but because we're seeing them nerf adcs a good amount and we're seeing a couple buffs to some other champions specifically leblanc while she's not in the champion buffs a couple items are being changed to pretty much favor her especially since she's one of those assassins that ends up being actually playable in in pro play and like even in like solo queue to an extent where she has like a better time uh, versus better players. And so Ari is usually, I was going to say meticulously, but I don't know if that's the correct word. A good answer to LeBlanc and to a lot of these champions because she is safe and things like that. So buffing Ari is kind of, I believe, in my opinion, while they don't state it here going to be someone who they want to see that ends up going against leblanc right these are two champions ari and leblanc are two champions that end up being you know these very fast very fun very you know movement intensive right very very good for the eyes champions that you can end up you know watching the game right they're they're very easy to see when they're doing something important and they end up dealing a lot of damage and are very good in various team comps and so you know, while this might end up breaking her in solo queue, right? A whole 40 damage. Obviously, you're not maxing this first, but as a second max, and even if you're making this a 1.1 there because you're going a more early game bully build, 15% AP ratio is nothing to scoff at. You get 100 AP, and you end up just dealing 15 more base damage on this, which can end up being really good, especially with all the... I don't know if you heard that, my bad. With all the nerfs to a lot of sustain, right? So, moving on. Now we go to Nar. And this is just a flat three base AD increase on both mini NAR and mega NAR. And this obviously means, you know, a whole bunch. Three flat AD means easier trades or means like more favorable trades. It means, you know, easier last hitting, more pushing power. And specifically with items like Trinity Force and Sterix Gauge, which gives you more damage based on your base AD like these are also very good items for nar and that you know these are items that nar ends up building pretty much every single game and so when you end up getting trinity force which is like 99 percent of the time nar's first item you just get a whole six more damage on every trinity force proc which throughout team fights throughout just fights in general throughout hitting turrets throughout hitting minions hitting jungle camps or whatever 
can end up adding up to a good amount of damage throughout the entire game. And obviously with Meganar, I believe Meganar ends up having like ridiculous, not necessarily base AD like ratios. I believe Meganar might have total AD, might have bonus AD. Don't necessarily know, haven't looked looked up Nar, but obviously this is going to be an amazing change for Nar. Nar in solo queue isn't in the worst spot. I'm pretty sure Nar is like decent. And in pro play, Nar is already decent. Uh, definitely getting picked a good amount by a couple of the top teams and even, you know, just teams around the world. And so is Nar a bad champion to end up, you know, watching in the game? Not really. Not a bad champion to end up playing. Uh, Nar is one of those range champions in top lane, which a lot of people don't necessarily have too much of a of a problem with. You know, I'll, you know, mostly when we're speaking about range champions in top lane, uh, we should be talking about Nar, Urgot. Quinn, I guess, right? Uh, but usually people are talking about the Veins, the Zeri, Smolder, AP champions in the top lane and stuff like that. So Nar getting a little buff. Another one where, you know, might just bring Nar over the top. Uh, even for solo queue, Nar might end up being a really good solo queue pick now. Like just like Ari, like if you want free OP, these champions might just be a little too over buffed. And so you're just going to have an easier time playing them. And... So I think for solo queue, these might get reverted, but for pro play, completely fine. And now we get Hui support. Uh, this isn't necessarily like a Hui, like people, they're expecting people to play Hui as a support champion or to be picked in the support role. This is just whenever you're playing Hui, you end up getting 25% more of the shield effectiveness of your W when you press WW. And I don't know how much the numbers actually turn out to be, but if it's anywhere from like 20 to 50 in the early game going to like 100 to 200 in the like late game to really late game it's actually not not terrible especially if you're able to get a really good like you know team oriented shield you know to start fights because i believe his shield lingers and ends up scaling with you know how much time you have based inside the thing way's not in a terrible spot he's just you know he's not ari he's not leblanc he's not you know, some of these champions that people like to really play around. And Huey doesn't have the easiest time for some ADCs. It's not bad, but um, we might see some Huey uh, in specific scenarios. But if there was Fearless Draft, we would 100% see Huey. But there's not. Now we go to Jarvan, where the passive ends up getting 1% increase of the target's current HP ratio. You deal 1% more damage every 6 seconds when you auto attack based on the current HP and some people in the comments were saying this is what made Jarvan pick her ban a lot like in a couple seasons ago but we're in a whole new season we're in a whole different like set of items set of of things like this Jarvan is in a decent role I don't think for solo queue this means that this champion is going to be absolutely amazing uh the champions are really really good and this doesn't make him over the top but this is obviously just letting people know I'm pretty sure this is one of those buffs that are just letting people know hey jarvin's here you know this will end up increasing his single target damage obviously this will end up increasing his jungle clear as well because one percent of of a of a jungle camp that has 2000 hp is an extra 20 damage you do that you know like every 10 seconds ends up being not bad especially since jarvin ends up having armor penetration in his kit so those are a couple things you have to you know understand about this champion and just giving this champion who doesn't necessarily build lethality a little bit more damage when they end up building bruiser uh or because they end up building bruiser is just kind of gonna going to make this champion a little better so this is a fine change it's not really going to do you know amazingly for jarvin but it's okay right obviously very much appreciates it but yeah, and now the Jax PBE changes there. I don't know if they're looking to like completely put these in, but we'll see. Right, so the R on hit damage on the ultimate, once you unlock your ultimate, ends up staying the same at rank 1. Rank 2 goes up by 10 and rank 3 goes up by 20. Obviously, your trading power, and if you use it correctly, I believe there's like a thing where you stack two you get like two stacks of your ultimate then you press r and then it changes it to every two auto attacks you end up getting the bonus damage and you get like a, a very good uh burst combo with, with something like that i believe there's, there's like a little trick to it but an extra 10 damage this is probably better in the 1v1 because in an all-out team fight Jax doesn't necessarily survive very long 
as opposed to in 1v1s where the fights can draw out to like 10, 20 seconds depending on the matchup. Uh, where in those situations, you will, this will mean, this will be significant. But in team fight situations where Jax usually goes in for a big burst combo and, you know, tries to survive as long as he can or as long as they can while dealing as much damage, you know, you, you're going to get a, a good amount of damage from this. And, you know, obviously, this is, you know, this is just a straight Jax buff. What this doesn't necessarily do is like buff uh, jungle Jax. This is more of a top lane Jax buff because obviously you want levels to, you know, get to that level 16 where you end up getting 20 damage every single, you know, hit. And this is also magic damage, which makes it, you know, a little better for uh, when you have more AD oriented team comps. So you get more value out of your magic damage and things like that. And then they end up doing like increased armor uh, for the ultimate where at rank one is the same at rank two. No. Yeah. At rank two, you get plus five base increase. And at rank three, you end up getting plus 15 base increase just for hitting your ultimate. And then uh, for every champion after the first champion, you end up getting plus five for each one with the same ratio. And then for the magic resistance portion of it, I'm pretty sure it's 66% of of all of it or just 60%. And so you can you can read it here. But uh, making Jax tank gear, making Jax wanting to build more damage instead of, you know, I believe right now the build is like either Blade, Trinity, Jax show, or it's like Trinity, uh, Sunder Sky, Jax show or something like that. But they end up going tank stats after getting like two bruiser items, which... You kind of want Jax to build as much damage as possible, uh, but you also want Jax to survive because this champion has a lot of damage in his kit. And so they're adding some survivability while also adding damage, kind of rounding out any type of build you want to go. You get, you know, more, you get kind of, not necessarily, you get more value out of building tank gear, I would say, in this one. Uh, because, you know, early game, even though early game, you're not going to get much more resistances, but you're going to get more damage, right? 10 damage is nothing to scoff at at level 11. You reach level 11, especially as a top lane who gets increased XP. If you remember that, that buff to top lane, they get there quicker, especially if, if Jax is, you know, in a decent spot. And so this 10 damage can end up being very good for all ins and, you know, for even pokes, uh, you know, poking some champions, you know, depending on, on, uh, you know what the matchup is and how you end up winning it and blah 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 right so i think this is a good buff this might end up being one of those buffs that puts Jax over the top especially if you're able to get to level 11 which is where you're going to get a very big increase and at level 16 this kind of might make Jax super duper op but as we all know in pro play it's easier to get to level 16 uh solo queue is not as easy you know games kind of over and, and people don't like to stay as long but i think this is definitely a great buff to really see what Jax, you know, look is looking like. Obviously, in solo queue, Jax is going to be an overall better pick as opposed to pro play and things like that. Okay, let's go to Jace, and this is 100% a not only a pro play oriented buff, but more of just a Jace mastery buff, where the slow on the queue in hammer form is going up by five percent at all ranks, and the speed boost. Or the move speed increase on the acceleration gate, which is the cannon E or the the ranged form E, uh, goes up by five percent in uh, at each rank. And what this means is that you know I don't know if you ever seen Jace gameplay, but usually you switch to hammer form and you look to Q, not the enemy champion, but when the enemy champion is near like the melee, uh, their melee minions or their ranged minions, you end up trying to hit them with the AOE. And then, you know, you go for an all-in combo like that. And so for for people like that, this is going to be a lot better, right? Uh, uh, and things like that. I think this is obviously not going to put them over the top. Uh, I feel like they could have done a little bit more. But, you know, what can they really do outside of giving Jace more damage and making him more oppressive? Uh, you could have done something like maybe gave him, you know, like scaling something, right? I don't think you really necessarily want to give him attack speed. But maybe make his... AD growth higher at, at later levels and stuff. I don't know. Uh, but this is fine. Uh, I feel like a lot of people aren't necessarily going to notice this unless you're really good at Jace, which is kind of, you know, the people who play him, right? You don't really play Jace unless you're actually, you know, care about the champion. You don't just pop out Jace out of nowhere and things like that just because you see some people throw out some good EQs and things. 
And now this is a buff that a lot of people are very scared about or that I think people should be scared about. Now Jinx is getting uh, the attack speed per level increased, right? So this is just her base attack speed. This isn't an attack speed ratio uh, increase, which means that, you know, her items become more effective. This is just whenever she gets a level, she gets 0.4 more attack speed, making her, you know, less reliant on getting early attack speed. Right, kind of making this a little better if, you know, instead of going Kraken Slayer first, this allows for builds to end up letting her go uh, like Infinity Edge first. Because, you know, while losing a lot of the attack speed from Kraken Slayer or even Static Shiv, which, <laughs> if you don't know my thoughts on that item, it's, it's all right. I don't think it's very good. But, yeah, I think that is definitely something you can look at for this. Uh, but obviously, if you're stacking attack speed, it's still going to be better. I don't think that there's not any diminishing returns in stacking attack speed. So the more attack speed you get, you know, the better it is. It, it still e equates to more damage. But yeah, every every form of Jinx is just buffed uh, with whichever type of build you want to go, right? If you want to go for a more early game build where you get Kraken Slayer, buffed. If you want to go for a, a more two item spike build where you get Infinity Edge into like Ruin Ends or, or, or attack speed zero item, buffed right and this just is just bleh. this is just overall going to make her early game better and her her just entire game better so i think this is obviously good we might see a partial revert we might see a complete revert on this because i don't think jinx is in a bad spot i just think that you know some other champions are better but we will see that a lot of champions that are very good versus jinx end up getting nerfed so now we get a lulu buff and this buff i didn't necessarily not I don't understand. I don't understand it too much, right? So her passive, the picks very companion. Uh, the base damage per bolt increased to th from three to thirty-seven to five to thirty-nine. It's just basically plus two damage at all at all levels. Excuse me. And I believe picks ends up doing like multiple bolts per auto attack. I believe it ends up being like let me let me see real quick. Low, low, low. Oops. Because I don't think it's just like you get two damage. I'm pretty sure it's something like more damage. Uh, yeah, you see, it's it's uh, each bolt deals. She fires a barrage of three bolts, right? So it's not just a, a three damage increase. It's actually a six damage increase, right? Because for every bolt, you deal this this amount of damage. So it's at level one, it's nine damage. But now it's 15 damage at level one. So at all ranks, this is plus six damage and this means a lot more for early game this also means a lot more for champions that end up having a lot of attack speed early game wink wink we just gave jinx an attack speed buff so if there's a good spot to play lulu in the bot lane with a, a in a an ad carry my bad for that has a lot of attack speed you just kind of got an ardent sensor buff right so if you're able to pull out a jinx lulu bot lane you pretty much just got an Ardent Sensor worth of damage and an Ardent Sensor worth of, of, worth of attack speed with these little buffs. Obviously, point four, you would need to get to like level... I don't necessarily know how, how this works, but uh, you would need to get to, you know, X amount of level in order to get this. But this, once you get to like level three, it ends up being... Because it's, it's just six at all ranks. Uh, it ends up being like... what It's plus two every level. Am I, it ends up being 27 damage at level 3, I believe. So yeah, at level 3, you, you get Arden Sensor's amount of bonus damage, which is ridiculous, no? And then, you know, when Lulu presses W, you get Arden Sensor amount of attack speed. So don't sleep on these Lulu buffs. Might not look like a lot, but for the early game, this just makes Lulu that much more of a bully, and it makes whoever you end up putting it on deal that much more damage. This is nothing to sleep at. Okay, so now Malphite getting a little bit of love. I believe uh, Malphite once used to have the, the shield be a little stronger, like 12%, but then they, they brought it down to 8% eventually, and then they brought it back up to 9 and now it's back to 10%. This doesn't necessarily mean too much. Uh, obviously, every item that Malphite ends up getting ends up having a little bit of HP, but Malphite isn't a champion that ends up buying Warmogs, not a champion that ends up buying Heartsteel, you know, you don't necessarily this is really good you know once you get to like level six level level 11 or like six through 11 this this is amazing and then you know after that it's just 
pretty much turbo broken because then you have like bonus 1k hp and you're you know it's it's max hp you know you're level like 16 which you already have a base 2k uh and so now this is just a 300 hp shield for you know whatever and you know as long as it doesn't break you end up getting like triple of your armor and, and things like that right so it's it's a decent buff but this is kind of just a, you know shoving him a little bit forward like hey this is a you know this champion's still here it's kind of equal to the jarvan buff where it's gonna help you save a little hp in lane it's gonna help you trade a little bit better because you have a little bit more hp i don't think this overall changes how malphite wants to build this doesn't change you know anything uh just makes him a little easier to play which is completely fine now samira uh samira is getting some ad ratio buffs and the cap at rank five on her Q is still 125, but they just buffed the early game thing. This doesn't mean that you're still not maxing Q. This doesn't mean that you know you're putting like three points into Q and then you know maxing something else. No, what this means is just that every little long sword, every little pickaxe that you get ends up being better. You know, your early game trades are going to be better, plus your uh like your item purchases are going to be a little better. 10% in the early game. One thing I do want to look at is like, is it total AD or is it, oops, or is it bonus AD? It is, it's total AD, which this doesn't necessarily, I mean, I guess it's AD ratio, but total AD. So at level one, you're just getting 10% of your total AD. I believe Samir ends up having anywhere from like 70 to 80. So you're getting like a seven damage to eight damage buff which is amazing right and then it just keeps being good until it ends up equaling out at level nine this is definitely really good uh i believe samira in some matchups looks for like level three all ins uh and then you know you're you're, you're not necessarily weak but you know you're, you're you have the potential to trade and then at level six it becomes like obviously super strong right so at even at level five you still have a five percent extra total ad ratio which is you know super good Right, if you end up having, let's say you ended up buying pickaxe, you're obviously like level seven or, or level five or something, or level six, you ended up, you know, basing before you, you try to all in at level six, you end up having 120 AD, 5% of that, an extra six damage on your Q, you might get two Qs off in a trade. Uh, if you get the melee Qs, they're AoE, so things like that, blah, 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 right? This is pretty good. I think it's fine. This might be kind of a placebo buff. Samira's right now in a decent spot. It's just not the best that there's like a lot of cc in a lot of matches right now right because the the more cc there is especially the more single target cc that she can't dodge or block with her w uh makes it a lot harder right so if there's nautiluses if there's leonas in the game uh makes it a lot harder for samira to play especially if you know the you know your team doesn't have other champions that uh they you know they have to focus on and stuff like that which you know you shouldn't draft samira in but uh, you know, we should have been seeing Samira being pulled out, especially when MF is getting played. But, uh, yeah, this is okay. I don't think this necessarily makes her turbo broken. I think this is a good thing to to do. Uh, I don't know which other ways they could buff her. Maybe make you know a couple items work on her. You know, work on the way that she creates and stuff like that. But yeah. So now we go to Shen, and a lot of people were were also you know talking about this one. They were like, we don't want to see Shen in the game. But Shen's actually pretty cool. I remember in a EU LCS game or, or whatever the thing, uh, LEC game, uh, there was a Shen that ended up turbo carrying a fight, dealing massive damage. And I was like, that's actually pretty cool because we never see that. Right. So the the passive barrier, whenever you use a, a spell, uh, you end up getting a, a, a passive shield ends up being stronger throughout the it's, it's based on levels. So I'm pretty sure. It's stronger. I'm, they didn't tell us, and I don't know the math behind it, but I'm pretty sure it's stronger at every rank, especially since I got a 1% bonus HP ratio, uh, and all of Shen's items end up having bonus HP. And so, you know, this is similar to the Malphite one, except this one's obviously better because you get a base increase and, and things like that. But this is also bonus HP, and so, you know, uh, the other one was total HP. But yeah, this one's fine. I think this doesn't make Shen broken. Some people were talking about Shen jungle, Maybe that's good too. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this is good. I think Shen should probably be getting played a little bit more. He's he's a really good tank. He's a, you know, he's very useful. 
and things like that. And, you know, it's a uh, lane swap meta, which Shen's actually not bad in, but it is what it is, right? Now we go to Viego, and Viego, similar to Nar, gets a increased three base AD. And I believe Viego sometimes ends up going a Trinity Force build. So this is actually a good amount of damage. And you also got to remember with the Viego passive with a double hit, whenever you hit somebody with an ability, you end up doing a double hit on them. You're getting not necessarily more base AD than this, but you're getting a lot more like usefulness out of the AD that you end up getting. I don't know the how much damage the second hit does compared to the first is a 25%, 50%, whatever. But yeah, this is just an overall amazing buff. And then Q, Blade of the Ruin King, bonus monster damage reduced, 20 to 15. This is obviously not amazing, but, you know, some people might look at this as a nerf, but this is more a nerf towards like, towards, uh, what's it called? Like multi-hitting. So when you're hitting the, the little parts of the camps, right? Like when you're hitting Raptors, you're dealing less damage to, to it all, which are passive. But with the bonus AD ratio, whoever, whichever, like, the monster you're hitting, the big monster, which is pretty much what who you're focusing as Viego, as always, because your Q is going to uh, end up killing the, the small ones anyways. Uh, this is not a net decrease of damage. Unless there ends up being something where you have to spend time hitting the camp a little bit more because this 5 damage ends up being something big for, like, Raptors, uh, which might end up happening if that does happen. This might end up being a net, like, nerf because it ends up slowing Viego's clear speed, stuff like that, when it's kind of supposed to end up buffing his clear speed. But what this also does, because of the last set of Viego changes, ended up buffing his laning. This might make either top lane Viego or mid lane Viego be really good in, like, solo queue. So this might be something you might see for me. And, and you know, I might end up, you know, doing something like that. And we go to Zin Zhao. And Xin Zhao's armor per level got increased by 0.3. This is okay, right? You know, usually these are really good buffs for champions that end up having the ability to go to top lane or mid lane to get more XP. But Xin Zhao's not really one of those champions. And so it's not that big of a deal, right? When you get to like level 4, you get one bonus armor uh, than you didn't have otherwise. And that's not really going to change anything. But then they also increase the damage of the Q. And it's plus 12 at all ranks besides the first rank of uh, right because you have three hits of the q it's plus four plus eight plus 12 plus 16 right so 16 damage at rank five on every single hit which ends up equating to 48 damage if you hit all three that's pretty good especially since Zin Zhao has the ability uh to lower his own cooldowns and he ends up building a lot of uh cdr Things like that base damage, you know, like I said, for another champion, I forgot exactly what champion that was for Jax is very important because Xin Zhao wants to be someone who ha who builds a lot of damage. Right. Uh, and then so now th because he's getting a little bit more damage, uh, he gets to build a little bit more survivability. Right. Uh, let me check the time real quick. I need to start getting going, but we're getting to the nerfs. So with this, I don't think this makes Xin Zhao, you know, super good. This is not that big of a, you know, not that big of a deal because you're not maxing your Q first. You're maxing your W. And so this is a buff for if Xin Zhao can get to level 13, if Xin Zhao can get to late game, you're going to get a lot. You know, you're going to get a decent amount of armor. Uh, you get how much armor at level at level 18. You get like an extra three. No, you get like an extra like four to five to six. That's, you know, obviously good. But is that going to make or break Zin Zhao? You know, pro play is, is very early game based. And this is not necessarily an early game buff. You know, at level, what is that? At level, set, at level 8, you end up putting your second point into Q. And you get an extra 12 damage if you hit all three parts of them. Is that going to make it, you know, super good for him? And then you get what? An extra 2... Two armor, is that going to make a difference in Xin Zhao actually being amazing? I wouldn't say so. And now we go to the nerfs. So Aurora is getting kind of turbo turbo nerfed. But let's see what ends up happening. So her 
her R is being the, the, the thing that's getting targeted. So the duration reduced. So it used to go from 3 seconds to 3.5 to 4 seconds. Now it's 2 seconds at rank 1, 2.5 at rank 2, and 3 seconds at rank 3. Now, yeah, a lot of people were saying that, you know, a really cool part about Aurora is the ability to use the walls for her to teleport and get to different angles. Uh, but with this, with the duration being decreased, it actually ends up being you know not as possible to do that maybe you can do it once to get to the other side and maybe once to go back especially at rank one it's it's going to be a real big toss-up if you even want to risk going to the other side right oh or like even being able to to get to a side where you're able to to you know jump with the walls and also i believe the duration starts while she's still in the air of using her ultimate and so you kind of lose a little bit of time on the duration of the thing or being able to use the walls to really jump around. So this is definitely, I think, one of the worst parts. As opposed to a lot of people, you know, when Aurora ult happens, they don't want to run through it because it ends up pushing you back. Like, I'm pretty sure it doesn't push you back that much, but it puts you, pushes you back enough to where, you know, people think it's so much of a threat that they don't want to even go through it at, at all. Which I think is probably a mistake. Right? Just get get rid of the thing to jump back. It doesn't even slow you. You just get pushed back a little bit. And then you can just walk away again. Uh, you know, instead of waiting the duration. But it doesn't deal damage anyways. But yeah. So the jump max distance reduced. This is talking about when you press ultimate. You're allowed to press it, you know, at a farther distance than on top of yourself. And so they're lowering that by 200 units. Which is definitely pretty big. You kind of, you know, uh, the range of the ultimate is already like 900 to like 1,100. And so you're, and then plus the 450 because of the jump max distance was, you know, it had an effective range of like 1,500, right? And now they're lowering that by 200, which is definitely fair. And then wall jump forgiveness reduced. It used to be 700. Now it's 450. Uh, this definitely made it really good for a lot of like sneaky ultimates, which I think is definitely whack. Because this allowed for like some really cool plays and like some really cool escapes for sure and some really cool engages. Uh, I I don't like I don't like any of these changes, right? I would rather they just hit her, like her, uh, not necessarily her damage, just hit her ability to kind of be like you know have that that CC right that keeps you in close. Just get rid of that. Let them walk out. Who cares? Let this champion just be super cool and, and do some really cool things, but. Fortunately, we can't have cool things. We rather have, you know, anno more annoying things, which is, is never fun. This is definitely one of those changes that I feel is not good, right? It says players will need much more selective uh, about their engages and her ult will lock down champions for less time. See, this is the, the annoying part. Why, why do we need her to have a sort of type of lockdown for champions? Why don't we leave that to champions like Lissandra, to champions like... Uh, you know, uh, like Annie, uh, Vex, and things like that, or or whatever the you know some champions you could think of, or Malzahar and things like. That. Why does Aurora also need that in her kit? And then they actually get rid of all the fun parts. This is definitely a direction I don't think they should be pushing Aurora in. They should be getting rid of her utility and making her a pure damage threat. You know, her utility is in her slow on her E, and it's in her pretty much being able to toggle aggro with her her ultimate jumping around the walls and her w that should be her utility and if anything you can add some other utility and things like that but i think they need to get rid of the utility on the ultimate and give her back these numbers um maybe the the jump max distance can stay down but the duration needs to stay up and the forgiveness i mean it's some of these were broken for sure you could do like some really some really mean engages but uh like i don't know like you should be you should be rewarded for either putting the enemy team in a spot where they can get engaged with one of these like surprise ones or you rewarded for them being dumb enough to not understand or not not put enough time to to know that this is somewhere where if aurora's camping behind this wall she can actually hit you without you knowing but it is what it is, right? And now Azir getting a turbo nerf uh, on the ultimate, which is a little bit of safer place to, to nerf Azir, right? You Azir shouldn't necessarily... Uh, Azir's ultimate shouldn't necessarily one-shot you. It should be used more. If you're using the shuffle to shuffle the enemy, 
instead of using it defensively, you should get it for, you know, kind of the CC, right? It shouldn't be something that you just one shot them on. And a lot of people were saying that this obviously hurts the the tank build because the tank build, you know, when you're building tanks, tanky on anybody, you're, you know, usually doing it because you have good base damage to, to suffice doing it. And I think this is a good way to to nerf Azir because this number is, is extremely egregious, right? 600 damage is, is, is wild. You know, champions at level 18 have 2,400 HP, especially the squishier champions. So you're dealing a quarter of their HP plus your AP ratio and things like that. And they don't buy magic resistance. So you're kind of dealing half of their HP with one with one ability, which is ridiculous. So I, I like this nerf. This makes a lot of sense. But I wish they compensated Azir with some buffs somewhere else. That would have been, you know, decent. Maybe an attack speed ratio. Maybe... uh. You know, a little bit of more, uh, sprinkle a little bit more damage here, sprinkle a little bit more CD here, or something, do something like that. But just outright nerfing his ear, he's he's good, but he's not somewhere where he's he's a problem. I like this nerf though. So rank one R going down by twenty five percent. Rank two R going down, well, not by twenty five percent, by twenty five flat damage. Rank two R going by seventy five flat damage, and rank three going down by a whole hundred twenty five flat damage. And then the AP ratio nerf going down by fifteen percent. Just all throughout this ultimate on Azir is just flat out nerfed. But it's not like they changed the way it works like they did with Aurora. Where they just changed like the entirety of, of what the, the you can do with the ultimate. So I think this is more fair than what Aurora, what happened to Aurora. Quirky nerf. Uh, Q Phosphorus Bomb damage reduced by 5 at rank 2, 10 at rank 3, 15 at rank 4, 20 at rank 5. This is fine. Uh, they're also doing some indirect nurse with some runes, and we will go over those. I feel like Corky should, you know, if I was to to do something for Corky, especially if you want Corky to be in the bot lane and to build differently, obviously give him some critical strike buffs uh, or like some critical strike uh, balances, right? Build crit, and you end up dealing uh, more damage, right? Especially if you build it early and stuff like that. Or also make it so that like his E... You know, you only get the shred if you are, you know, around another teammate, right? That that for sure hurts his early game because for Corky, if you have your E up in the even in the mid lane, your trades are one sided. It's always favoring you. And so that's what makes his, you know, Corky even being viable in the mid lane because not only is he super safe or he's safe enough or just safer than a lot of other champions he ends up you know scaling to become a ranged like actual ranged poke carry while dealing a ton of damage if he's you know able to auto attack and then he also has the utility with the armor shred which also you know has really good base values in the early game so this is fine but i feel like if they really i don't think they want to put corky in the bot lane i don't think they care enough uh but there's definitely ways and levers they could if they ever wanted to i think my mom wants to talk to me okay, what's up? See, I'm away. Damn, I'm boss. My bad. It's my mom's birthday. Say happy birthday to Mama Stacks. Love that woman. Okay, so Ivern just getting a 10 base nerf on the shield and getting a 5% slow reduced on the E. Maybe some people, what this really means, you know, the 10 base nerf might not mean a lot, but obviously when you get to like 50% base healing shield power or healing shield power, uh, this is a a, a fifteen nerf, right? Uh, yeah, this is like a fifteen, uh, overall base shield nerf, which can be decent because you have super low cooldowns, and if you're able to get like three or four of these off, you know you're missing 45, 60 team HP, and so that's you know it's not terrible, but uh, in the early game it's going to mean a little bit more, because you know if you end up having to fight at level three. Where you you're losing ten early early HP, which is you know can't that's basically scorch. If the enemy team has scorch on any of the, the people that you're fighting with, you know it it's gonna be it's gonna deal damage now. Uh, and then the slow being down by five percent, I don't think that's that big. Forty percent is already like a lot, especially since this is early game, right? People don't have boots, uh, so this five percent, you know, it's gonna be felt a little bit more, but it's already kind of like your your CC'd and. And you're not being able to move. When it does matter, it's kind of at like 55 where people have, have boots. Maybe people have Swifties. This is probably more of a nerf if people end up getting Swifties. 
because this 5% ends up becoming like 75.5%, uh, maybe 10%, and things like that. Uh, but this isn't necessarily bad. We're still, we still should, should see Ivern in pro play, especially since, you know, uh, you know, some champions might end up getting played in the jungle. Maybe Shen, I doubt it. Uh, Viego, I'm pretty sure Ivern's pretty good versus Viego. Uh, we might see Jax, we might see Jarvan. Uh, this person's pretty good versus versus them too, right? Ivern's pretty good versus them, and we're seeing some nerfs to some some AP junglers. And Ivern's still Ivern like barely got touched, I would say. So Leona, four base armor nerf. This is definitely huge. Uh, you know, deserved. Uh, Lilia, the her Q damage capped was reduced. So I don't know what part of this is. Is this the the? Is this just the damage? Q Dream Laden Bow. Wait, let's check it out. What the hell did I press? Okay, Lilia. This is the passive. Oh, why does it say Q? This is the passive. It only deals percent damage. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know. It deals five percent plus this, so five percent of two thousand is not going to reach this cap. You would end up needing someone to have. Six K. Three K. You would end up needing someone to have like three K HP. Or a jungle monster camp to have 3k HP in order to feel this. Which I think is early game red and blue buff. I believe. They, they probably have less than that. But in the second spawn is when you're going to start feeling this. I think. Uh, because I'm pretty sure those those camps end up having three 3k HP. And stuff like that. So I think that's when you're going to start feeling this. So her early game clear doesn't matter. And then... So this doesn't affect their early game clear. And then obviously this affects her her damage versus uh, epic monsters, right? Who end up having more than like 5k HP. Uh, that's when it's going to start making her deal a little bit less. But I don't think, you know, some people were like, oh, Lilia's dead. Or they, they took her outside and shot her in the kneecaps. I actually don't think this matters. Just saying. Uh, and then obviously uh, the flat two seconds, 2.5. Her R's uh, sleep duration used to be 2 seconds at rank 1, 2, 2.5, 2 2.25 at rank 2, and 2.5 at rank 3. Now it's 2 seconds flat. This is a great nerf. Uh, I don't know if this means anything for the ultimate. See, now the ultimate, see, now what this could mean is that you don't put more points into her ultimate after the first uh, because you only get 50 damage. Right, obviously it's a multi-targeted ability, so you can. This is more than fifty damage, and I believe, yeah, it's more than fifty damage. But obviously, this cooldown is like super high, and the champion doesn't get that much like ability haste in the build. So that's probably still a good reason to put uh, points into your ultimate. But outside of that, uh, yeah, there's there's not too much. I don't think there's too much changing. So if you thought this was really bad for her. You got, you need, you know, you need to do some, some math. So let's go to Lissandra. I want to check something out because I believe she also got a, a, uh, okay. She didn't get a thing. So 14.13, she ended up getting a, a ratio increase on her Q and I'm pretty sure she hasn't been touched on her damage for a long time in there. Right? So last patch, they ended up increasing her base damage by a whole whopping 20 at rank 5 on her Q. Uh, and now they're just decreasing the AP ratio. But what this means is that your early game isn't... At, it's pretty much a net neutral. Until you end up getting to higher AP, AP uh, things. Because uh, the increase at like rank 3, which is like level 5 on your Q, is going to be 10 flat damage from the last patch. But you're losing 10% AP ratio. But at level 5, you probably still haven't based it. You probably have like 30 AP. And so you're losing 3 damage from this. Uh, which is, you know, a net gain of 7. And then obviously the later on to the game, you're going to lose damage and stuff. But 
This is probably not bad because I'm pretty sure Lissandra needed, she didn't need more scaling buffs because she does her job well, right? She goes in, deals good amount of AoE damage, and locks someone up, right? Uh, as opposed to, you know, somebody like like LeBlanc whose job is to deal damage, right? Lissandra deals damage as her secondary job and her primary job is to lock down targets. And so this is whatever. And I think it's still not as bad as the good that she got from this early game buff which you know obviously gives her more wave clear and gives her you know more trading power in the early game so i think it's obviously bad but you know it's not the end of the world for pro play for solo queue it's pretty bad so maokai sapling nerf this doesn't matter uh the cooldown does matter right especially if you end up buying something like leandry's first Two seconds early, especially since Maokai's E ends up being a one point wonder, where you want to, you know, you want points in Q. This is for jungle and top lane. Uh, Maokai for wave clear, and then your W for CC duration. So this is actually huge if you don't buy any, or if you don't get a lot of ability haste in your build through runes or items, uh, especially early. This is going to be definitely not good. And then the inburst duration bonus HP ratio reduced from two point five percent to one point five percent. Uh, this might be big, especially with the cooldown increase, right? So if you're not buying haste or a lot of HP, your saplings aren't going to live that long. But they already lived for an like an egregiously long time, and so this is pretty big. Uh, it's big, but I I don't think it's gonna change. You know whether people are gonna pick Malkai or not. Misfortune losing two base AD is actually very huge, especially for the early game. She's not necessarily known as a huge early game monster. But she can end up being pretty decent in, in early game like trades. And so this kind of, you know, this nerfs her a lot because she's, you know, she's supposed to be pretty strong in the early game for how easy the champion is. And, and it's fine. I don't think this stops anyone from playing her, right? If you get a good team comp, you know, to press R with, she's going to be amazing. And she's really good versus a lot of champions, especially since Jinx ended up getting buffed. Uh, Misfortune is one of the better like uh, uh champions versus her because you know if you just have somebody to lock her down you press r and you're completely fine so now we get a nasus uh nerf where the initial damage you know the the whole thing of nasus was three points e when you're going against like a ranged champion uh that doesn't have any sustain it was three points e uh into you know max whatever else right usually q or or, or w i'm pretty sure it was just max q but so let's see what this does obviously in the late game you're losing a lot but you never put five points into your e it was usually three points so one thing that you notice that they don't hit here is the armor penetration which is actually a very big part of the of like the e it's extremely good in a lot of team comps extremely versatile right you pretty much give a free black cleaver for your team and as long as they're inside the spirit fire and, and things like that right you, you give your teammates uh, free armor penetration which is amazing similar to jarvin and stuff like that uh but if we look at the base damage it goes by uh five minus five in the early game at level one minus 15 at level two and minus 25 at level three or at rank three which is huge right and then the base tick damage goes down by one rank one three rank two and five rank three and so usually you hit them with the base which is, you know, at, at rank 3, which is it's going to stay on for pretty much the rest of the game. Uh, that's minus 25 damage. And then minus 5 damage per tick, you usually get 1 or 2 ticks. So in total, you're, you know, you're getting rid of 35 damage every single E. 30 to 35 damage, that's pretty huge. But with the nerfs to sustain, it, it's not as big as it is, especially in the counter matchups. But versus some other champions who have a little bit better sustain, uh, and if they choose to go a little bit more sustain early, this is going to be felt a little bit more. It's not going to be as good as a counter pick as it once was. Uh, but Nasus is still untouched in terms of like his scaling and, you know, his counter scalings in terms of the wither and, you know, armor penetration versus a lot of champions. So, you know, I think Nasus is still in a fine spot. So Rel getting a little bit of like a team movement speed nerf, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I'm just skip that one. I gotta go. Uh, Rumble getting a lot of early game damage reduced. Uh, I believe it's like, mm, yeah, it's 20 damage in the early game. Oh, 20 damage at, at rank one. 
a Q, 15 at rank 2, 10 at rank 3, 5 at rank 4, and 0 at rank 5, plus a flat 10% AP ratio nerf. But this is also if you hit them with the entirety of your Q. If you miss any uh, parts of the Q, it ends up being a little bit more of a nerf, right? So it's pretty big, pretty big nerf. And then the E electric harpoon base damage is going down by 10 at all ranks, which is huge, right? Not only are you losing just flat damage, but since you have uh, magic penetration in your kit, uh, it means a little bit more. Uh, but these are big rumble nerfs. Does this mean that rumble is going to now be you know, a worse champion? Obviously, Does this means he's not going to be picked. Probably not. But yeah, this also affects his wave clear. We don't see rumble in the jungle, but yeah, this affects his wave clear. This affects his trading. And just his overall early game power makes him, you know, more of a, a regular champion instead of being turbo, turbo broken. Uh, Smolder, they're, they're pulling back on the, the buffs they gave him, which was the five base damage on the Q. Uh, they're, they're getting rid of the AP ratio. Uh, these are all pretty fair buffs. Like, usually you don't play Smolder to deal really big damage early, but he's been doing a surprising amount of damage, right? You hit that 225 and you become a whole different champion. And then the W... The the big snot bubble that ends up hitting people uh, ends up dealing five less damage at all ranks. Completely fine. And now they're going back a little bit on the various buffs that they put. The overall base damage or bonus ratio of the Q ends up going down. It, it used to be 150% of your bonus or yeah, of your bonus AD to 190 at rank five. Now it's 130 to 170. And they they changed the way the you know the charge time of it ends up increasing right so at all ranks you're getting less damage out of the q uh and then you're getting less damage out of the e right 10 percent flat bonus ad ratio on the e so they're kind of they're crippling a little bit of the the mid or the the lethality varus but what, another thing is that they're nerfing the they're also nerfing the on hit variation because you didn't get like you barely got enough ad to make this a buff for on hit varus now this is either a slight nerf from the the you know the the change they made to the q to a slight buff uh depending on how much ad and what your build is so you know it's pretty annoying that you're nerfing on hit varus maybe deserve the nerf but yeah this is just an overall nerf and you know revert back varus was probably in too good of a spot anyways but i think this is fine i still think lethality varus is going to be you know good and it's going to show up so yeah hopefully i'm almost done i'm actually not very close to being done and i have to go like now but okay vi a little bit of the base damage revert who cares uh zary people think this kills zary this does not kill zary please uh like the the passive big burst thing isn't what makes zary broken it's obviously good for her her trades uh this is definitely going to be a little bit worse but this is hitting the they say it's backloaded which means it's hitting zeri who gets more levels which means that actually now it's linear which i think means if you get more levels you're getting less nerfed uh, as opposed to if you got more if you got less levels so this is hitting bot lane zeri actually more than it is hitting mid lane zeri which is not good they should have made this front loaded or they should have made this actually linear I mean, regardless, if you're getting more levels, you're you're getting more base stats. So, but whatever. I think this hits more uh more thing. Backloaded means that this was more favorable for uh mid lane, and linear means it's it's just overall what it is, right? If you get more levels, you're gonna get more value because you get more levels. So Ziggs, I think there was also another nerf to the passive damage of the the enhanced uh Q, but the passive Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just lowering the passive damage on the enhanced auto attack by 75%, which is actually huge. Uh, when, especially for the lane swap metas, where if the Ziggs comp was able to go bot lane in the first five minutes, if they're able to stay bot lane and they don't have to go top lane, this is, this is huge because you're dealing a lot less damage to the turret. But this is even worse if you're forced to go top lane and now you're dealing a lot less extra damage to the turrets, especially with the changes to the turrets that they're making. Uh, so I think this is a good nerf though. Ziggs is in a great spot. And now we got Luden's Companion. I think these items getting changed are amazing. So Luden's is getting, you know, what it should have gotten, more AP, 
less haste and it has the same gold cost as the other ones because this should be the the burst oriented one this means a lot for leblanc for you know champions who just want to build more burst uh champions like syndra and stuff like that this is better for them uh, where they're not necessarily they don't necessarily care too much about the haste they care more about dealing more damage and this makes sense right now shadow flame i don't like this one uh the ap reduced by five the magic pen increased by three and then the the increased damage and stuff like that uh the threshold used to be 35 percent now it's 40 percent and the damage over time boost was 30 percent now it's 25 percent which i think this was an item that should replace uh death cap for these champions with damage over time but they're kind of rolling that back and making this more of a overall good item for anybody which i don't think this item is better than anyone than any other like item just get death cap now i don't think i think this item should kind of be forgotten uh this is like a, a net neutral 5 ap for for three things uh but yeah i don't like this change but this change is really interesting and super good. So magic penetration on Storm Surge increased by 5. Amazing. The move speed decreased by 3%. Not that big of a deal. The storm rate enemy max HP threshold reduced from 35% to 25%. This is huge. And this squall damage increased. Uh, now it's the same for everybody. Right? 140 flat base damage and 20% AP used to be lowered for range. Now it's not. This is just going to make LeBlanc uh, picker ban maybe not necessarily pick a band but an amazing champion in the mid lane now right you go ludens into storm surge uh you gain a whole bunch more stats and you gain a whole bunch of burst damage uh yeah like i i don't think i think leblanc's gonna be one of the best champions right now uh fleet pretty hard it's hard nerf for for ranged and it's buff for melees i think that's fine i do think yasuo and yone are a little bit of a problem uh in higher levels of play they're not that big of a problem because people shut them down, but in lower levels where people, you know, ignore these snowball-y champions, it's, you know, going to help them a lot. Uh, the bonus move speed got increased, yeah, it's just uh, buffed for for uh, melees, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the minion health ratio decrease is net neutral for melee, but it's, like, very bad for ranged, and I think this is fine. A lot of people are saying, you know, uh, range champion or range ADCs don't have a keystone. But, you know, you're supposed to deal damage. You're not supposed to be this Goliath tanky, like, champion that deals damage and isn't supposed to die. So, you know, unlucky. I I'm not a, a, a ADC sympathizer. Because if you're good at the game, those champions are broken. But, you know, it, unfortunate. Uh, I do think this should probably be you know they should probably add more keystones lethal tempo being gone is obviously uh bad for adcs but that rune was 100 percent broken uh for everybody and then some other things bloodthirst are being nerfed i think the lifesteal is more important the shield isn't that big of a deal because the shield is pretty much the same at level eight uh and then the later you go it, it's not that much uh that that worse this doesn't this isn't that big of a deal i say it's or it's still gonna be the same good item that it is. Uh, I think this one this means a lot, a little bit more though. Three percent that means you're gonna heal slower, and it means you're gonna get the shield slower. Uh, shield bow getting nerfed for range and buffed for or like a net neutral early game buff for melee is I think completely fine. This item was already super good or it was decent, and now it's okay. Turret bulwark, uh, turrets getting overall nerf for lane swaps. Uh, yeah, you could probably find someone else that could tell you something a lot better for this. But that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I gotta go. My dog needs an appointment. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Thanks, love. Bye.